up? Shani and Charlie here with my main man Danny. He'll probably pop it in and out of the video. Um, just want to come with you guys and if you click on this video then you're either dealing with these issues or you know someone who is dealing with these issues. So I really didn't want to do this video. I'm still a little shaky. I don't know if I'm going to post it. But I was having a conversation with someone. And you know, I'm just opening up to them and I'm just telling them some of the things that, you know, I've been through in, you know, in the past and things that I deal with sometimes now. And this person was like, you know, well, do you think that all of that that you've been through, all that that you suffered from, this hard life that you've had, do you think that that was only for you to just sit back, write poems about it and, you know, talk to random people about it? Or do you, he said, it's probably hundreds if not thousands if not millions of people that need to hear they're not the only one they may be having those same thoughts those same feelings that you had so i'm not trying to, he's, he was like well i'm not trying to tell you what to do but you know you got a youtube page so you may want to just talk about this and i just want to talk about it lightly today um depending on the response i may go deeper into it and i just want to talk about mental health because I don't know how it is in other communities, but I know in the black community, it is a stigma. It's not talked about. People don't want to talk about it. And I just come out here today, if you're watching this video, no matter if you're black, white, green, blue, purple, whatever, you are not the only one. I faced mental health issues. I've, but I've suffered from depression. I've uh, attempted suicide at a young age. Um, and matter of fact, more than once, um, once in my teens and once in my um, 20s, and I'm 34 now. And I think a lot of it comes from not having anyone to talk to about certain issues, not having anyone to talk to about certain things, and feeling like you're by yourself, feeling like you're alone. One thing I realize is my family, a lot of my family members have mental health issues, you know, from depression to bipolar, schizophrenia. And a lot of my family members have addictions. And a lot of times mental health and addictions, they run hand in hand. Like me, I used to be an alcoholic. But so much stuff was going on in my life, I couldn't cope. I would drink until I literally passed out about every day. You know, I would drink to that point every day so I wouldn't have to deal with it. And now that I'm older, now that I have more education and I'm more aware of mental health issues, I know that I was self-medicating is all the things that was going on in my head in my mind all depression all everything I was drinking to get uh, get away from all of that so well when I was in my mid-20s I was diagnosed with having borderline personality disorder and I'm just gonna look it up here and I'm gonna read you what it says um, it's also called BPD and it is the cause of birth okay the cause of borderline personality disorder isn't well understood the diagnosis is made on symptoms symptoms include emotional instability feelings of worthlessness insecurity impulsivity and impaired social relationships so yeah I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder in my mid-20s. I was medicated in my mid-20s to help with some of my emotional instabilities. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's hard to talk about because when people see, you know, when they see the word mental health, they're like, oh man, this chick is crazy. But um, yeah, so and at the time that narrowed down who I was, I was emotionally unstable i was impulsive i was insecure you know i did have you know impaired relationships with my family with you know people i chose to date it, it that was me that to a t and they medicated me i had anxiety really really bad and so they medicated me and so going with the person the gen the um borderline personality disorder going along with that was the depression you know the that that was just really too much so they i was medicated with lexapro i was medicated with lexapro lexapro and so i my job became very stressful and it got to the point that i wasn't sleeping and i didn't realize that i wasn't sleeping because my anxiety was just so high and so i was um prescribed 
Trazodone. I think that's how you say it. Trazodone. Trazodone or Trazodone. I was prescribed that for insomnia, but it was also for anxiety and depression as well. So I took that and she had my dosage so high. I mean, so high when I was on it. Basically, I was just high and sluggish, but I was still wasn't sleeping. Still wasn't sleeping. So she prescribed something that I can't remember what it was. Trazodone was, she prescribed one thing to make me go to sleep and Trazodone was to make me stay asleep. I slept maybe four hours a day and I got right back up. And I'm like heavily medicated. Um, and so I was just like, bump this you know i'm getting back with my faith i'm getting back where i need to be with my faith so that's what i did uh i got back into church i started talking more i started helping other people i started being more aware of what i did and how i felt at that time and however i feel i'll either write it down or either i'll go and pray about it and that helped like people say things like prayer doesn't work for jesus isn't real that's a lie jesus is real <laughs> because i'm still here and it shouldn't be such a stigma. It shouldn't be to where people who are dealing with these things, like a lot of times when people are dealing with these things, it's not their fault. It's not their fault. I mean, it can be some experiences they've been through. It can be some things that they've seen, heard. It can be, I mean, just hereditary. You know, it can be, it can be things going on, you know, in their family. And I mean... No one wants to talk about it though. Everyone's too embarrassed. And when people are dealing with these things, they're too embarrassed to go to people because it's, it's such a stigma in the black community. Like, stop that. Like, for real, stop that. And I know people that are actually dealing with depression and people say things to them like, you know, well, man up or, you know, stop whining, all this crazy stuff that people say. But sometimes it's deeper than that. Sometimes it's deeper than a person just being a little too sensitive. Sometimes this person really has issues going on on the inside of them. But you're making them go further on the inside because you're dismissing what they're saying. You're belittling them or calling... I mean, especially men. No man likes to be called soft. Like, what man wants to be called soft? No man. I don't care who you are. No man wants to be called soft. But men, these situations, they plague men just as much as they, they plague women. Um, But I just want to put this out there that... You're not the only one. If you're dealing with it or if you know someone who's dealing with it, they're not alone and you're not alone. But one thing I can say helped me, and a lot of people want to argue this fact, but a lot of things that helped me is Jesus. I mean, people can say what they want to say, but just because you say he, he isn't real doesn't make him not be real. You know, just because you say, because all the medication that they had me on, it didn't help me. It pretty much made me sleep and it made me a zombie. So, of course, now nah, you're not feeling depressed because you zonked out. You ain't feeling nothing. That, that's basically what the medication did for me. They made me feel nothing. When I got off the medication and I started trusting Jesus, I'm talking about, it was like a complete 180. It was like I finally felt joy in my life. I finally felt joy in my life. Finally did. Finally did. But even, And I encourage people, like, Get not just any church, but get into a real church that preaches Jesus Christ. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, get there. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Get there. Go. In it. But if you can't go, if you can't get there, or if you don't want to go, talk to somebody. Talk to somebody. Let people know how you are feeling. And if somebody's coming to you, talking to you, letting you know they have these thoughts and they feel these feelings... Don't laugh at them. Don't shun them. Don't dismiss them. Because you may be, you may be the difference between life and death for that person. That person, I, I will never forget, and I'm going to end this video. I will never forget my friend and I, we used to walk around downtown and we used to minister to the homeless and, you know, just the people that were out there. And this one man, we would just talk and we would just talk to everyone out there. But this one man sitting in the corner and he just wouldn't even make eye contact with us. And so you're just going to clean yourself while I'm, while I'm doing this right. So he finally, eventually I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go talk to him. So I was talking to him. He kept his head out. He never made eye contact with me. And so at the end, when I was just telling him how much Jesus loved him 
And I'm like, man, I've, I've set what you said. I said, I can tell. I said, you feel like you just, you want to die right now. I said, but it ain't your time. Jesus loves you. He died for you. That man looked at me. He said, I know Jesus sent you here because I was going to commit suicide today. He said, as you were talking, I was sitting here thinking about how I was going to do it. I was thinking how I was going to commit suicide. Like, what would be the best way that I want to step in front of a car? I don't have a gun. Like, what would be the, the best way for me to commit suicide today? And he said, I'm going to live. You know, I'm not going to do it. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. You know, even to this day, I thank you, Jesus, for that. And the next time, that next week, I went down there. I saw that man. That man was smiling. He had such a big smile on his face. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Jesus works. Even if you don't believe that, I'm begging you to believe me. But even if you don't believe me, talk to somebody. You are not alone. That that you feel it. You are not the only one that's felt that way. And it's not your time. It's not time for you to leave yet. If you're thinking about committing suicide, I have numbers in the description box of professionals. Uh, I will be more than happy to, but I'm not a professional. You know, but I have numbers um, to hotlines, professionals that you can contact. But I didn't want this to be an extra long video because I wanted you to be able to stay and watch the entire thing. But thank you so much, guys, for sticking with us. And if you want more of this topic, you want me to go more into detail, let me know. I'll be more than happy to talk about it. But thank you so much, guys, for watching. And as usual, to the loop. Bye-bye. You want to say bye-bye? You want to say bye-bye? See you later. Alright guys, so thank you so much for tuning into my channel. Remember to like, to comment, to subscribe, and to share. Remember to subscribe. That is very, very important so you don't miss any future videos and hit that bell. Anything else you want to say on this channel, please comment down below. Let me know and I'll be more than happy to oblige. Thank you so much for watching and as usual, toodaloo. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.